Okay, so everyone keeps asking me how long this takes me to make these masks, and I'm talking about a fitted mask, or I call Hannibal Lecter mask. And so I figure I make this video real quick so that I can show you that there is a lot of work involved, but it's actually super easy, and I'm going to just do it really quick as a demonstration, and let's get going. So we're going to open up our Cricut. Our Cricut design and I already have this saved into my favorites from like six months ago and we are at the end of August now okay so as this opens up I'm gonna go right into my projects which what is coming up a duplicate let's see there we go okay so we're gonna go into my projects where I have it saved under my favorites. And you're just gonna look it up as um, the mask, I believe. We're gonna go into my favorites. And this one I've made, the fast, uh, face mask with the window, I'm, I'm not really fond of that one. It's kind of difficult, but these are all my favorites, and here's the face mask. So this is the one you're gonna look for, this is the one you're gonna click, and it has all the different sizes, they combined it, all the sizes now, so you don't have to go to each one. And they also have it for different machines, they have it for the Explorer, and they have it for the Cricut Maker, which this is the Cricut Maker. So I'm going to make, um, I have a mask for a large adult face mask, that's the one I'm gonna click, and then I'm gonna click Make It, now I know where my folding lines are, so I'm not going to need the marker, the Cricut marker, which is gonna be right here. I'm gonna click that off. So if you need it for the first few that you make, go ahead and keep it on. And all it's gonna do is it's going to outline this when it cuts, the rotary is gonna cut this, and then it's gonna put a line here where you're gonna basically fold and iron. And it's very, very light blue, you can't see it in the picture, but I can see it on my machine, very, very light. So I don't need the lines. So for this video, we're just gonna turn it off, but if you need it, basically again, all you're gonna do is once this is cut out, you're going to fold down onto about a quarter of an inch and you're going to iron all of the edges down because you're going to end up sewing onto that. So we're gonna shut that off now the quickest way to do this there's four mats we're not going to do four mats as you see this one is the same one as number two one and two so what we're going to do is we're going to cut our fabric a seven by eight so we're going to cut seven by eight because this goes down in between the seven and eight and we're going to cut this doubled because it's gonna be our solid, it's gonna be the inside. One and two are your inside of your mask. Three and four are way larger, they're the outside. These are the ones that are where you're gonna create pockets and you're gonna create for your, where your elastic is gonna go into. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut just black. I usually use Kona fabric. So we're gonna cut that and we're gonna go over to the Cricut let me just turn here so that you can see where the Cricut is. It's like all the way over there. Okay, so let's do that. This is our fabric that we're going to cut. We're gonna do Mickey Mouse Yoda. And we're going to cut the black really fast. So I have my ruler over here, but I pretty much can judge it of what it's going to be. So what I'm going to do is take my fabric and it's doubled and we are going to cut a 7 by 8. So this is 8. We're just going to make a square really quick.
It doesn't have to be perfect because this isn't the part that we need. We need the inside part. Inside. So this is two pieces in one. You can cut down here if you want. You don't have to. Then we're going to go back to the Cricut Maker. And then we are going to click continue and then I do two pieces at once so I'm going to make sure that my pressure is going to be on more we're going to click cotton and I put it on more and now we go back to the Cricut and we're going to cut it so I don't use the adhesive I use a lot of tape. So we're going to put this on here, which I made like an eight by eight. And we're just going to tape down the corners. And stick it in the machine. We're gonna press the arrow. And then when that loads up, we have the rotary in there. I need to clean off really quick, which I usually just clean it. I actually have to replace my blade because this one is getting worn out. Now this makes it go quicker, but I'm going very slow right now so that you understand. Click the Cricut. It's going to cut that out for me. the marker first you would have to have the marker in the marker one and then as it's doing its thing the first thing it would do is draw the actual shape and then it would draw again inside the shape where you're going to put your fold lines but because I've done this so many times I've already got this down now we're gonna take this off and I just lost a piece of tape there it is I didn't press it down when you put the tape on, press it down firmly so it stays. I didn't do it that very well. Okay, so this is what it looks like and you're just going to kind of like pull at it. But because I have to replace my blade, I'm gonna have to go through with the scissors just to clean it up a little bit. So we'll do that in a minute. So let's go on to the next piece. Let's go back to the computer. All right, so then the second piece is gonna come up here, but we already did that. We basically did that so we have two pieces already here. So first step and second step are already done. So we're gonna go to the third step and the fourth step. Now the third step is the outside piece and then the fourth step is the outside piece. So it's just the left and the right side of the face. So what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna double up our fabric and then we're gonna put it on the Cricut mat. And we need an eight by eight. So let's go and repeat this. Go back to the fabric. And we're gonna cut an eight by eight. And we're gonna put it on the mat with the tape cut that out now if you want to keep copying the pattern already cut out you are going to mess up the shape of the mask so this is how the fabric comes keep it this way when you have it this way it's facing the right way it's facing the right way because this is how it's going to go on the mat if you move it around or flip it upside down you're going to get yourself confused and then you're going to print upside down and then the mask is going to be upside down so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut an eight by eight. We're gonna take this part off. And cut that. Get rid of the straps. So this is 
an eight by eight, you can save on fabric if you hand cut it yourself when you get a pattern, but I do not suggest you to do more than one at a time because it will mess up the shape of the, the size. And I've done that, I've done that millions of times and I ended up redoing the mask, which will end up wasting fabric and fabric is not cheap, especially this little guy. This little guy just got in and he is really expensive. So I actually need to make two of these in the large, but we're only gonna do one for demonstration purpose. And then we're going to put him on right in the corner like this. This is, one side is backwards up, the other side is the right way. So you're gonna keep it like a book so that after it's cut out, you're actually going to see it the way it should be because we're going to sew it at the seams. So we're going to firmly put that down so we don't get stuck again in the carpet. And then we're gonna do this. Usually this tape lasts for at least three or four, maybe five cuts, but it's much better than this adhesive. All right, we'll put that through, and that's gonna cut the next piece. In the meantime, I am going to, my lighting is bad, we're gonna take this piece out, and go right along the lines, This is only because I have to change my blade. So this is how you know when you have to change your blade when you can't cut through two pieces. Yeah, this one, I really gotta cut, change my blade. All right, now I can't see. So if I can't see my pattern because it gets this bad, that's when I put the other piece on top is what I'm going to have to do. Maybe. No, I got it. I almost got it. Almost. This is where this takes me forever. Okay. These are all going to be folded down these edges. So we're just gonna clean it up on this part of it so we don't have stragglers. So you're gonna have your two pieces. You have your two pieces. Oops, sorry, got the camera shaking there. And two pieces. And then we're gonna get this one out so that we have two pieces of the front. Save my tape, put this away. All right, and some fabric, it actually pulls apart very easily because this the fabric's really good. This one happens to be really good, see? And then I just have to get a little bit of the edge. I don't like to yank too much because it shreds it. Then I gotta clean up all the edges because you don't want this on the inside of your mask. It just doesn't look good. And then what I do is I save all these pieces that I can, and I have a huge bag full of scraps, and I'll probably make a quilt or something out of it one day when I figure that out. Now see this piece? Because my rotary blade needs to be changed, it's not gonna be as easy. So I'm gonna get this started, and I'm gonna put this one on here upside down so that I can follow it. So let me just get it really quick. There we go. I should have, I really should have changed the blade before I started this video. It would be better. Okay, so we are gonna make this. can see some of the edges as I'm doing this. There he is. All right. 
if you do it one by one, it is going to take you longer. But because I'm doing this for a video, it's kind of like taking me longer. I'm trying to get the angle for you. All right. So now I got two, two pieces. They could be made into a bookmark or whatever. Okay. So now we have all four pieces. And we're just going to take them together. And we're going to bring them to the sewing machine. Now we are done with the Cricut. We don't need this anymore. So step one and two got converted into one and three and four got converted into. And you can always tap if you have to redo, always tap and then just repeat that one. But if you messed it up, you only have to, like I said, double up your fabric and then do that. So let's come over here to the sewing machine. And we're going to sew the edges really quick. So we're gonna take these two and we're gonna match them up like so. I just wanna clean up this a little bit. All right, so I have gray threading inside here. And what I'm going to do is use the crisscross stitch to make it firm, make it extra strong. And we're gonna go a fourth of the way down. So we're just gonna go like here, by the point. I'm gonna put this on number eight. I'm gonna go right here, get situated, put down. So by the time you do this, hundred times you will already know where to stitch and you're just basically feeding it through until you get to the bottom a fourth of an inch you don't want to go all the way to the bottom because you won't be able to fold them up to iron and you'll see like right there is good so then we're going to come up we're going to go back in and then we're going to pull this out and we're going to do the same thing for this one, which this one is missing its little corner. There we go. And then we're gonna cut this when this is done before we move on. Okay, so this one you'll see the lines. This is the like gray, silver, pewter, and black. it along the arch. And a little bit more and stop. All right, so now we're gonna back it up, back stitch, give it a good lock, boom. All right, we're gonna pull this out and take the snips and we're gonna snip off the pieces on the end here and I'm gonna put my extra strap there so that my thread keeps going. So let's take this off because this is where we're going to clean it up. I'm going to go like this. Snip. I'm going to make him famous. Okay. And then I'm going to take my big scissors and I'm going to go across the edge and just clean it up. But I want to go halfway. I don't want to go all the way to the stitch because if you do, then it's just going to pop through your stitches and you also can um, detach it. So you just want to go like that. You just want to go like around where you're close enough. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to have to hold it a little tight because it's flimsy. So I use interface inside of mine, which acts as a filter and it also stiffens it up like a collar. So you'll shape the mask better by using it. You don't need to use it on both sides of the mask, but you can. Certain fabrics I do because certain fabrics aren't as um, tight as the other. So now we're gonna go to the iron station. Okay. So this is how we're gonna iron it. We're going to take our interface and I use 931 TD. 
it's mid-weight. And what I like to do is just fold this in half. So you have a front and a back, and this part, this side, is rough right here, and that's the adhesive side. So we're going to put it on here. So I'm just going to kind of like create the shape. You can put it right on there if you want, but you, eventually you will get the hang of it. See, and, and I always come here and clip off the tails she'll get the hang of it and then what we're gonna do is we're going to, you can either do both sides at the same time or you can do one side and usually I make this a little bit bigger but it's okay because the folding is gonna go on the area that I don't have the interface and sometimes having too much material makes it harder for your needle to go through so this is just gonna make him just a little stiffer and you don't need a filter but I use the blue auto shop filters you cut them the size and just throw them on in take them out these stay in and it's washable okay so now we're gonna flip it inside out and this is where all of the ironing comes into play this is where my shoulders hurt so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go like this this is how I do it I go a little tiny bit at a time. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing. Flip it over. Do this. And then we're going to flip it inside out. And now we're going to go across the edges. with the right hand. Yeah. No, nope, I'm not doing it with the right hand. I usually do it with the same. That's why I'm all discombobulated. So we're going to go like this. And then we're just going to make a little tiny enough to stitch over. Okay. So see, we're just going to do enough. Now this is what that marker is going to do. That marker is just telling you this is your folding line. So you don't need the folding line if you can just imagine it in your mind where it's going to be. So now I'm going to just do this to both the front and the back of the mask the same exact way. I do the two sides, do the top, and do the bottom. Hold it for a couple seconds. Then we fold this in. Okay, this is this is skipping the step. Normally, what what Cricut wants you to do is they want you to stitch here, then fold it over and stitch again. That's what's in their instructions. I'm bypassing that because when I do the stitching here, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to stitch over that. So I make my mark here and I just run over it. And then I'm gonna make another side and I just go about a quart, quarter of a way in, which is what the marker, the marker shows here and then here. It basically just outlines exactly where we folded. So you skip over that step if you can because you're gonna waste time. So again, we're gonna do the same thing with the inside. This is the black Kona. Just getting it crimped and lined up where you're gonna sew. Everywhere we folded, we're gonna sew. The trick about this is starting it at the edge and then molding it all the way up to the top. Because you only need a little bit or you'll lose the sizing.
Now with the backing, is smaller than the front. So when you cut these pieces, you should always know the big pieces that are have a longer tail. That's always gonna be the, the front side of the face. So in case you get them mixed up, which I did in the beginning, I got them so mixed up that I was driving myself crazy and I just ended up recutting it. I wasted a lot of fabric doing that because I just couldn't remember which piece went to what. So always remember that the first two on the Cricut mat are your inside pieces and then the others are the outside. So here is the folded and this is what we're gonna stitch together. But first, we got, it, we got things to do. So we're done right now with the iron. The only time we need to iron now is when it's all done and just print it up again. So let's go back to the sewing machine. Let me move this out of the way so that I can get the camera back. Over to the sewing machine. Oops, sorry. I'm really bad at this right now because I am doing this kind of quickly and by myself. All right, so let me actually zoom in so you can see what I'm stitching. And hopefully I'm not in the way of the camera. Okay. Because I don't know how well that is. So what we're gonna do is, I believe on my mask, yeah, I'm doing flat. So for this being a large, People are always saying, can you make it a little bigger because it's too tight around the ears. So I'm gonna measure my elastic, which I got from Walmart, which is awesome, 10 and a half inches. Now, if I go a little bit bigger, it's okay because they can always tie it in a knot and make it shorter, or they can cut it and then redo it, depending on if the sewing machine, I can get it just right for the pockets. Because sometimes you run over the elastic inside the pockets. So we're just going to tie a knot at the end. Now you can do this two ways. You can do this part first, or you can go like this and feed it through and then tie a knot and then push it through. But sometimes a little hole is not big enough. So I've found out it's easier with this elastic just to do it like this. And it's a one, one way only. All right, so we just tie this like that. And now we have our knots. Okay, so now we have everything to sew it. So before, like I said, Cricut wants you to sew this and then they want you to put this in here and then they want you to do that. So I don't want to double stitch over, it's a waste of thread too. So what I do is I take my elastic, I put it in here and I have it on the cross stitch still. And then we're just going to go along the edge. Like that. And we're gonna start it. And we're gonna back it up. Now I can feel my knot right here, which is always gets in the way. So once I get closer to that, I'm gonna push it in a little bit to get it out of the way. So hopefully I won't run over it. And it will make you go around it. So if it makes you go around it, go around it. And we're gonna back stitch it. And then we're gonna go forward. Okay, and pull this out. So we'll just leave that there. And now we'll do this one. We're just doing the edges. That's it, just the, just the outside edges. It's the only thing we're stitching right now, outside edges. If this does not go through for you, go slower, pull it out and make the needle go in front of where you were it goes slow because sometimes it'll just get locked up in there and it is such a pain in the butt and you'll just be sewing over and over and over in the same spot. Okay. So now this is what we're gonna repeat on the other side. So let's get this off of here. Once you get the hang of this, it will go faster. But you're eliminating this step and you're eliminating the Cricut step of doing it. I mean, it's for beginners. And once you kind of like figure out Cricut, then you can like move up a little bit and 
this is how I've been able to do it. So we're gonna go like this again on the edge. make sure that we keep our folds here because see this is creating the fold up on the top too. and see how I'm going try to push it if it doesn't pick up your needle push it forward a little bit and then go slow and then get it right in again because it's a pain in the butt on the edges no matter what fabric you use okay so now I'm by the knot and it's pushing it's pushing me and the knot is in the way so what I'm gonna do is grab it from the back and I'm gonna pull it and keep running over it because as you make this it gets tighter and tighter in your spaces so it's it's really hard on the eyes let me just tell you that okay let's clip this off and we're gonna get the other side we're almost done you just have to put it together that's it just top and the bottom and the middle and we're done so it takes less than 30 minutes for sure, but that's if you don't have problems like cutting like this part right here. This is the part that gets every time. See, I'm going slow, I'm trying to get it in there. There we go, it's working. And sometimes it might get a little pink up, but it's okay. It's okay, it's nothing is perfect with this. It's handmade with love, that's all that matters. Now we're gonna trim and trim that one. Make sure that you have any. I'm always looking and making like a little haircut. I take my little scrap piece so we can keep the thread going and we don't have to re-thread. It's my machine. It's a pain in the butt sometimes. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're almost there. We're going to match up all the corners. So we're going to go point and point. So your seams are going to be the same. Now I'm going to switch my stitch to the single line. It's not going to be a zigzag. So I use the number three on my brother. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go from here to here to where this, this ends. Okay. Because we're going to create the pockets now. So what I wanna do is make sure that this lines up before I get started. And I'm gonna slowly do it so that I get all the edges in because sometimes the edges will pop out because you really don't have much that you're using to um, see how the edges are coming up. You don't have much. So we just wanna make sure we guide it through. All right, start it, back it up to lock it in. Sometimes I go really slow because of the way it is. Alright, now we're gonna back it up. And you will see your lines when you're doing like this on color. So you wanna make sure your lines are pretty good. Just take your time. Alright, put this in there. Now let's do the other side. So we're gonna match that up. And don't worry, this is gonna be really big, but when we push it in, it's gonna come back in. So don't go all the way to the end or you're gonna get yourself locked into it and then you're gonna have to redo it. Just do, just let it do its thing. Just do it little by little. Now you can put a nose piece in here. It is very challenging. It's something you wanna do first before doing this part of the, the nose, and I think I just went over my line the wrong way. I might have to take it apart. Now we're stuck. Okay, we're stuck, so I'm gonna push it through. Yeah, I just screwed up my line. And we're gonna have to take that apart. If we have to take it apart, we take it apart. Back it up, because we don't wanna go past our Plastic. 
Yeah, see that kind of like looks screwy. We'll see how bad that is. Might not be so bad. extra out of there. All right. We're going to leave it alone. It's okay. All right. So now we're going to push it in because we're going to go down the center. When we go down the center and it's going to form, to, it's going to go along the side of that. So we're just going to go right down the center. And this is the part that's tricky because if it doesn't line up, you will have to redo it. I just had to fight with it last night because my fabric would not line up. It kept on flip flopping. This is the hardest part of the whole thing. So you want to make sure that that's in there. All right. And what I try to do is guide it, let it go on its own. So you're going to start at the top. You're going to slowly start it. Go back, lock it in. And just go along the side of the line. Don't stretch it too far. If you stretch it too far, all your seams are going to bust. You're going to see that in the front. Just kind of like guide it through. Give it a little bit of like a scoop. Line up this bottom here. If you feel confident that you did right down the line, you can continue going over. Or you can just back this up and then take it out and then start. But I feel confident, so I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go to the edge and I'm gonna spin it. Yeah, I feel pretty confident that looks good. I'm gonna go, go a little bit further. Okay, so now we're just going to make sure that this all lines up here on the edge. And we're gonna run it on the bottom. We don't want to go too far because we want to create the pocket, which is what's happening here. Okay, now we have a pocket to put your filter in. And I use the blue auto shop filters. And you just cut it to size and put it on in there. When you're done using your mask for the day, just throw it away. Now the interface is a filter, so that stays in, gets washed. You can leave that alone. See, we just went right there, just perfect. Now, if this is a little too long, what you can do is you can also bring this in. So sometimes I do that so that it stays, so that it matches. Because that does look a little bit bigger for some reason. Wow, that is really big. I wonder why that cut like that. Okay. I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna make that come in a little bit. And that happens sometimes, so it's just you just correct it. But this is it. This is all you do is finish this last one and you're done. And we're gonna add one extra step because I don't like how big that is. It doesn't usually do that, but every once in a while it will. See, that went right down the center. That is the hardest part of this whole mess. So yeah, that looks really weird. I don't know why that's like that. I have no idea why, why that did that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean that up. We're gonna fold it. And we're gonna go back in with the cross, or uh, the zigzag. And we're just going to make it look like it never happened. Sometimes it does. Just hold it there tightly. That one move.
hopefully we did not mess up the size by you know doing that. Sometimes we can. side John and then I do have another size I can do really fast to show you how quick this goes. It's already cut. looking pretty fly. All right. So then all I do is I just press down with the iron like this. Make it firm again. And there you go. All right. So let me do one really quick that I have on the side already. And I'll put one together. Now these are the lines I'm talking about. See these lines? This is what the Cricut does. And they're washable if you use the Cricut ones, but it's, you can see through it. I don't like that, but it will go away. All right, let me find, let's do, I got a bunch of these here. All already cut from a while ago. Let's do the sea turtles. Okay, so if you use the Cricut again, that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna draw this out for you and you see this is where you're gonna fold over. You're gonna do the edges first and then you come down. Always do the sides, iron it, and then start up here and work your way in. Okay, so that's what, that's what this is for. Origin, so what you're gonna do first is you're gonna go and sew here and then you're going to cut the edge off and then you're going to iron the edges all right so let's do that one more time and then we might iron over here because this has been sitting for a little bit we're just going to iron this out and we're going to clean this up a little bit I don't even know what size this is. I think this is a extra large, to be honest. I'll have to look. Okay. All right. So we're gonna put the insides out. The solid. It does not matter. I want this up. We can use the same color. It's fine. It's on the zigzag. So we're going to come in right here in the corner, which is exactly what this would be if we were doing this one, right in the corner. Come down, start it, back it up. I'm going to come down to the bottom, right before the corner, to give it some space for ironing. We'll leave that there and we'll get this one in. Okay. This one. 
Alright, now let's cut this. See, I'm going a little faster now because you, I've already showed you. So now we're just going to cut all the way to the top. This one I did pretty close to the edge, but see, like, you want to make sure that they're, they're going to match, otherwise we're going to have that problem again where the two are off a little bit. Okay, but doing the bigger ones faster and easier. So let's just, let's cut a bigger piece of in the face. Okay, we're just gonna cut half of it. So I'm gonna fold it because then this way I get the front and the back just like, you know, crooked it when you do a, the one, um, the two pieces of fabric on the mat for one, number one, instead of one and two. Or when you get to the smaller sizes, when you get to small, medium, you get to uh, youth and youth small, then you can fit two pieces on one mat. But for the large and the extra large, if there's just not enough room. So now I'm just gonna iron this on. Hold it down a few seconds. And now th this is nice and warm, so the other side will go faster because it's already warm. Sometimes I'll warm up my fabric before I even put it on so that I can just keep it moving. This depends on what mood I'm in, what I'm watching on TV. Yesterday it was really good. It was a good Lifetime movies. I was addicted to the TV. I was getting nothing done. Okay, so now we're going to... i got to get new blades for this too. But they're all out of stuff. So now we're going to do our ironing really quick. Okay, always start at the ends, fold down the end, come over, fold down a couple seconds, flip it to the end, fold down a couple seconds. All right, and when this gets washed, just take an iron to it and it'll make it like new again. Just like a pair of pants or shirt. Now remember those lines that Cricut's gonna give you? This is all it is, just you're springing it up a little bit. Do the edges. I used to like ironing, and now I'm like, ugh. 5,000 masks later. Ugh. This is not fun no more. Thank God, I say it's not fun. But the outcome of it, the finished product of it, is rewarding. This is just not fun no more. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Cricut wants you to do that extra step. They want you to fold it in. They want you to stitch here and here. I just don't bother. I skip that step and I just go, boom. I'm gonna run over it anyways. And this one. Okay, now we get our back end. And do the same. Repeat, repeat. This fabric, this brown fabric, I don't know if, if this is Kona, but I know I don't, I don't like it. I think it, no, I don't know, I don't remember, this could be that other one. Okay, and then we do this side. We start at a point and work our way to the end. It's just a guide. You know? You're just guiding it through. Okay. And then this one. Alright, now that was boring, right? Okay. So let's get to the magic. I'm gonna cut 
this is a really big mess. So I'm going to do 11 and a half inches because I believe this is an extra large. And if it's too big, I'll just tie a knot. So I'll do it both ways. I'll do it this way and then I'll show you the other way. The other way, like I said, is pain in the butt, especially with round elastic. You cannot get that in there. Trim that off. All right, so we're gonna do it both ways. I will show you. How to put it through it. Now you can do the sides and then worry about the elastic later, like prepare them ahead of time. If you don't prepare those corners just right, you're gonna end up, you know, hurting yourself later because if they want something, you're gonna have to feed it through. If you don't do it right away, you're gonna have to feed it through. And when you feed it through, it doesn't always go through and now you have to do it all over again. So we're just gonna strap that off because I wanna just get this one out of the way so I can show you the other one. So I hope this helps you because I didn't have anybody to teach me. I taught myself and I printed out the Cricut instructions and I went one by one. I blew up the pictures because you can tap on it, but it's a pain. It doesn't always work. And when it does work, it works like for a split second. I like, we literally was like starting to lose my patience at one point because I was like, what am I missing? And then I figured it out. And then I was like, oh, I can bypass this. So I started to, you know, customize it and I'm like, yeah, I can bypass that. I'm going to need that. Especially when these masks are really only good up to so many times, you gotta get a new one. All right, so we do this way. And we're gonna put this in the machine, it's already pre-made. It's okay. It's okay. All right. So now, this is what you would do for if you don't have the patience to hold that. Because sometimes this gets caught in the sewing machine and in the foot or in that little spring thing in there. All right. So what you do is you just go like this and put it down and then do it. Or you can sew along the edge and then you'll have a little pocket and you could feed it through later on if you wanna just be ahead of the game. And I don't wanna lose my fabric, it's expensive, so I don't. I make them as I am told because I have quite a few that are just sitting here because I was just making them or I messed them up or something. Some people don't care, they're just like, I'll take whatever. Whatever you got. Okay, so now what we do here, is we just tie the knot, and then we, we uh, work it through the, the hole we created. Okay, just clip off all these little pieces. So we're just going to tie a knot match it up and this is not easy when you're doing round elastic I'm just going to tell you now this is why I decided not to do this anymore All right. and you're going to guide it through like that now that I did easy but it believe me it does not work easy like that so now we have our front and now we're going to connect the two so we're gonna put it on the single stitch. Now you can leave it on the zigzag if you want. It does look cool on certain patterns. I don't do it on every pattern. I only do it on my lace. And I do lace over top or sequence or any of that. It's just, um, 
depends on what fabric I'm using. All right, so let's start this. Now see, this is evening up much better. This is how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, supposed to be, supposed to be. All right, now we're gonna guide this again along the edges, match them up perfectly. You don't need pins, you just hold it down firmly with your fingers and then stop. slow when you do that because if you do this little fabric trick you will pop your needle if you go too fast because you yank it you pull and yank it so just do it slowly and then play i can't tell you how many needles i've replaced because i stand and pressed too hard on the bow all right and put your nose piece in first before you put this together You don't really need a nose piece for these because they create a nose. If you do it right, it will create a nice tip. Okay, so just follow that through. And then the hard part. sure that these match. They should. Make like a little scoop. Play with it for a second. Because you want that to go perfectly to the side, not through it. If you go through the center, you're going to separate it. You want to go through the side. And Cricut tells you that too. Don't zigzag across. Try to stay on one side of the road. And it's hard. It's really not as easy as this might look. And see, if you pull too hard, you're going to see your, your stitching. So you don't want to pull, pull too hard. You just want to kind of like get the folds out. Because if you have folds in there, it will go over the folds. And then your, your nose is going to look really funny. And you have to redo it. So hopefully, I feel confident about this one. I'm just going to bring it over and finish the bottom. Sometimes I can't. I have to like stop and then start again. Especially if I don't feel confident about that nose. Alright, let's see how good I did. Sometimes I just go around and clean up the pieces sticking up because it just annoys me. I just I can see it. So there we go. I did. Ooh, I did really good. I did really really good. I stayed in the road, and, but then I came a little bit over on top of the road to the side. Okay, but it's good. It's clean looking. It's clean. 